Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another screencast where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, an amazing weekly uh, data project in R, run by the R for Data Science online learning community. And as usual, if you're joining me live, I'd be really excited to see what questions and ideas you have as we go through this uh, code together. It's one of my favorite parts of doing these live is seeing your comments. I am able to see all, all your uh, any comments you write into uh, YouTube, even if I don't respond right away. So let's see what I um what we have this week. All uh, right, the um, let's see the right uh. Commercial fishing. This data this week comes to the Great Lakes, Lakes Fishery Commission. I don't know anything about uh, the Great Lakes. I uh, think one of them is Lake Michigan and one of them is Lake Superior. I don't know anything about the Great Lakes. I think there are five. Maybe there are five of them, and they're in the what the United States. Like um, that's basically all I've got. But all right, I think it looks like it's going to probably gonna be a time series data. Let's see, five year intervals. Whoa, Nin eighteen. Sorry, eighteen sixty seven. Oh, this is some this is cool. I, I was thinking like, oh, there'd be some fish data for like a couple of years, but that's interesting. All right, so we're gonna be looking at time series, and wow, a lot of data here. I'm interested. Let's see what's let's see what what, uh, what we're looking at. I'm gonna use the um, look, it's tidy Tuesday R. Use tidy template. Uh, set us up. Let's do library scales. Theme set. Theme light. Set ourselves up. I usually start here and then I kind of skip the rest of it. And then let's start with fishing. Let's say a smaller data set. All right. I like the column names. The uh, 65,000 observations. Uh, grand, what's grand total as opposed to total of observed fish, I guess? Region of US Canada, so we can see production amount. Mm. All right, so one thing I'm missing here is what's the difference between grand total and values? Hmm. Let's uh, uh let's let's look for a second at what uh what these distributions look like. So if I look at grand total, oh uh, let me do a uh, fishing is TT fishing, and fishing is uh histogram. All right, and let's do a scale x log ten and do a plus one. Yeah, okay, so we uh, we see a bunch of zeros and then some moderate values. All right, so I just want to make sure it wasn't all like ones and zeros kind of stuff. That's grand total. What about values? I think values is more often zero, but um, looks like there's also a lot of missing data. Production amounts to the... Obser I'm trying to figure this out a, a little bit. Uh, let's see... And there's statistic notes, okay. This is uh, not quite what I wanted to see, what I was looking to see. There's production tables. Mm -hmm. A blank indicates no catch report. Yeah, I don't know the difference between the grand total and the values. We'll see if we, if, if if it uh, if it comes up if, if we're able to figure it out. Uh, the um. Yeah, uh, let's uh, we'll we'll take a look at a couple of fish at a time, and that might kind of help us. Let's actually look at which fish we have. So actually, what lakes do we have? Are there five? There are six. Was I just wrong, or is one of these not a um, not a great lake? Maybe on we'll see. Uh, I I don't know. But the um, and what about the species? This is not weighted by the number of fish; it's just like number of observations. Okay. The uh, yeah, I'm gonna use I think the grand wait grand total yeah. I wonder if that's like grand total summed across fi uh, uh, across all fish or something like that, or across all, all species. Oh, I see. Maybe it's across region. Yep. All right, so now I'm starting to see this a little bit. Aha, okay. So the story of grand total is imagine I did fishing group by uh, year, lake, and species. 
summer oh and um yes yeah, summarize total values equals sum of values I just think kind of detected oh um and uh and gr uh, first grand total is first of grand total just grab like the first one uh and a nope first doesn't take that but I will say I don't know, I'll do min grand total, whatever. Uh, no, it looks like a lot of them are just missing grand totals completely. So it's not, oh, maybe, maybe it's just for some of this data. Let's try year 2000. No, the grand total, <laughs> it's not quite adding up. So if I look at like 2000 Erie Carp, I'm really trying to understand what the grand total is grand across. I might just get rid of it and just use values. Uh, but if I say filter, I just want to understand this. Lake is Erie and species is carp. Uh, what did I get? Where did I spell wrong? Eerie. Uh, pretty sure I spelled eerie, right? Did I spell? Oh, years 200. And uh, yeah, so if we look at it across these four, um, no, the, the grand total is not the total across values. It is the same across these. So what if I said n grand total is n distinct grand total, narm equals true n grand total, yeah, there's a uh, count n grand total uh, on group. What I'm doing is I'm saying how, of, how often is there exactly one grand total in a, yeah, there's always either one grand total in a year lake fish combination, year lake species combination, uh, what it, at least after 2000. Yeah, all right, so except for one exception where there's one row, where there's like one, literally one row where there's like some two grand totals this combination, probably some kind of transcription or data cleaning issue. It looks like the grand total either it's always missing or it's or there's exactly one. All right, so this is a little bit helpful is I'm not gonna use grand total. So I'm gonna use the, um, uh, I'm gonna use the values because I can always sum them up. Uh, but yeah, all right, so I, I can, uh, just think I can use values. All right, but the, um, and the story next is that I probably wanna say like, okay, group by year, lake, and species. Summarize uh, total fit total fish is sum of values and ARM is true. That even is too much. I'm gonna start just with by year. All right, I think this is kind of serious. We're gonna do what we're doing a lot of aggregations that are across one or more dimensions. So I can say total fish. Oh uh geom line. We're gonna do a uh mm-hmm. Here we go, and we can. I'm going to make a little function that is called uh, summarize. What am I going to call it? Like summarize fish. So summarize fishing. It's called the data set fishing. What it does is do uh, summarize to, uh, n observations is n I'm also going to do a range descending total fish, not because I need it here, but because it's um. Uh, yeah, not because not not because I needed just uh, not for the for the year. It's not going to make a difference. The reason it's like doing this is that I can later. I'm going to be doing it on a couple of other like species and things like that. So summarize. So okay. So so first, this is looking at over, over time. And what if instead I want to do by decade is a uh, year over ten, ten times year uh, truncated division by ten. And now I can do it by decade. Uh, this is this a complete decade. This last uh, year, two thousand ten. Yeah, it, it's um. This is the two thousand. Actually, let me, let me check that with Geom Points and see every observation. Yep, there's one for two thousand ten. So fishing has been declining. Uh, are these fish caught or what? Are these like? Yep, this is total fish caught. Called production. I'm gonna call it total production. Then other things where production could mean like agriculture, but this first fishing data set we've worked with. And uh, let's just say, let's say scale y continuous labels equals comma format. And let's say, and let's make, you know, let's make it instead of these two do a geom call, just because I'm thinking that'll kind of communicate both the trend and the, um, and like what observations do we have. Total production per decade. 
There we go. And this is in thousands of pounds. I'm seeing this here. It's, uh, where is it? Thousands of, to the nearest thousand pounds. Yeah. All right. And uh, why? And let's, uh, yeah, let's make it a little bit clearer. We'll say decade and thousand pounds. All right. That's our first graph. Why did I spend so much time on this graph? Because I'm going to want to look at a couple other things. I'm going to want to say, what if I'm not grouping just by decade? What if I'm also grouping by species? If I do that, I'm going to need, I feel like I've got too many species here because I do fishing group by species, summarize uh, fishing, 51 species, that's too many. But FCT lump is one of our best friends. We'll do FCT lump of species uh, by, um, by and weighted, I'm oh, sorry, top six, let's say. What do we see? Species, total production, one, two, three, four, five. Six. You know, I actually see eight that are above 100K. Yeah, but the top, eh, you know, the top five maybe. And then we have a, yeah, let's do it. Let's do the top five. And um, weighted by, I really wonder if I do weighted by values, is this going to successfully, um, I, I don't know this, is it going to successfully like uh, lump it? Nope, all W must be negative and non-missing. You know, I'm thinking about this. I don't need anything that has an NA value. I kind of want to ignore it. Uh, I'm not doing anything with like, I don't need this data to be complete. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say, or back when I did this, um, read this in, I'm going to say filter not is NA value. How much smaller is that? Uh, 43,000. So about a third smaller. It's two thirds the size. We used to have 65,000. And uh, yeah, let's, oh, um, oh, are there filter values less than zero? Only two, that's not so, uh, that I'm just gonna go ahead and say values is greater than or equal to zero. I don't know why I'm keeping the zero, I'm, I'm gonna keep it for now anyway. Uh, there it is. And uh, now the great thing about doing a bar plot is I just say fill is species. And now I've got my my six species. The um, I might also want to say, yeah, I'm also gonna say species is FCP reorder species by values uh, aggregated by sum uh, to put other on the bottom, lake trout. Uh, so Cisco used to be a lot more common. And now, you know, it's, it's actually with a uh, stacked bar plot, it's easy to see some of the trends, but it's hard to see the, um, sorry, it's hard to see, easy to see the overall trend, but hard to distinguish between them. And there are some really interesting trends going on here. Cause I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and do a facet where I say facet wrap. Did I, um, yeah, I kept my, uh, did I keep my, yeah, I kept my regular decade one. I'm going to do a facet wrap by species. I'm going to change geom call to geom area. We've seen graphs like this and I just kind of like it. And I, now that I've got it faceted, I like having the colors, but I don't actually need the legend. So the theme legend position is none. Just thinking through some of the ways that I'd make this a little more community. I want to look at different fish production. And I'm going to do it the top eight. So we have nine uh, facets. And I might want to reverse the um, do dot yet D E S C is true here. So we put other Cisco Lake Whitefish, Alewife, Yellow Perch, Lake Trout, Chubs, Rainbow Spelt, Blue Pike. Whew. All right. So the um so that's a little bit of it. That, that's analysis on the um, here are nine fish and their uh, their their production over time. I, I like this graph. I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a label. We really notice, man. Other is, is still pretty common. What would happen if I did fifteen? I wonder are there interesting trends beyond the top. Yeah, uh, you know, not hugely. And I noticed like Cisco and Chubbs, Cisco and Chubbs. Ooh, there's gonna be some data cleaning we gotta do. I can keep in, Cis what is Cisco anyway? Cisco, Cisco is a type of fish. There's Cisco, there's Chubbs, there's Cisco and Chubb. Sure. Uh, what I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do here, let's see. I'm noticing there's inconsistent between some of them are are um, uh, are plural and some of them aren't, uh, and actually I bet they change over time. Let's take a look at this. Cisco and no, they don't. But mm, 
Notice, just take a look at, uh, let's actually filter just for the Cisco ones. So species, uh, so string detect uh, species. This should have been an, an early analysis. I did. Yeah, no, they're all kind of common in a similar time point, though. Uh, some of them you never see after a certain time. So there is inconsistency here. Okay, how are we going to standardize them? I can think of two ways. One is I want to keep all of them, um, I want to make all of them sentence cased, uh, pardon me, title cased. So like, like this Cisco and Chubb, not this one. And I want to drop the plurals as well. So let's try cleaning it in those two ways. So we'll say actually, I'm going to take a quick look at phishing. Wait, uh, yeah, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to bring this function up a little bit and do phishing, summarize phishing, group by species, uh, and let's like, look at it just for a second and see like where else do we see problems. Some of them are not plural. Uh, not a ton of other problems here, but I think what I'm going to do is to, to try and standardize them is do two, two steps. First, uh, first uh, species is string to title of species, and let's also do string remove of that. Remove with the regular expression s at the end. I'm just going to drop uh, any that end in s, and uh, oh, string remove, and here we go. And now Cisco and Chubb is just here. We don't see any other Cisco and Chubbs or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so this is pretty. This one's pretty good. I'm still keeping in the and, which is not, which is a little bit strange. Like to have the the and, but uh, I'm not gonna work with that. Oh, did I see one other? It's always could just like look through and say, do we see? Aha! I see a um. A, oh shoot! Bass! 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 Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, okay, what I'm going to do is, um, there's a, I can do a look behind regular, the problem is I removed the, the ending S in bass. Oh, uh, look at me go. Uh, so if there's an S, yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, instead of remove, I'm going to say string replace. And then this means not S, S with just... This says replace with this capturing group of whatever this letter this letter is. All right, so the um, uh, so we can so yeah, so I say fishing this and uh, view. I kept in the bass, and the chub is still all all here. Yeah, okay, looking good. All right, and now if I go back down and I do. How many have Cisco? I just get, get just Cisco and Cisco and Chubb. And here we have 16. All right. The, um, quick look through. All right. Uh, that, uh, this is pretty solid. Okay. Now, I, I, um, we take a look at, at species. I got a really interesting question from, um, uh, Robert, from, oh, sorry, from Barasa, which is how might, might one might predict future production per species? Yeah, I think we're going to do some forecasting. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to try uh, to try that out. There isn't seasonality here because this is yearly data. In fact, I think it might be every is it every five years or what is? No, let me, let me check. Count year. No, it's it's every year maybe. Uh, this is just looking at um, at yeah. I'm not missing any years. Some of them have there's more data points. That doesn't mean it's more um, it's more fish or anything for this time range. It could just be like some species being included here that aren't in others. I just want to take a look. Okay, it is every year, but we're not going to have to worry about seasonality, so I think forecasting, yeah, could be really um, uh, interesting. Oh. It's been a while since I did forecasting. I think it would be fun to, look, to, to try it out again. All right, so let's do the... Um, but first, I, I'm going to be interested in I, looking at species. We see, yeah, some things declined a lot, uh, and... Um, yeah, yellow perch is kind of, is, is relatively high now. Carp uh, spiked in in 1960. There's actually one other visualization then that I want to try here, which is what if I just looked at each of the um, what if I group by uh, oh yeah, so what if I group by year 
and species and summarize fish. And then I did uh, what year? Then I did group. Oh, and uh, I'll, I'll actually do by species and year. And then I'll do, um, it's so still grouped by year, you can see. So now I'm going to do another summarize where I say summarize total production is sum of total production. And also peak year. Here's a fun one year which dot max of total production. When did it peak? So now I can say ah, uh, and uh, oh, and do a range descending. Uh, speed, uh, descending uh, total production. So now I can see, okay, Cisco is the most common uh, fish, and it peaked in 1918. Lake Whitefish peaked much more recently. Uh, so the reason I like this graph is I can actually, I can look at something like this, but on a, on a very, if I, if all I care about is the peak, I can try looking at peak year by species. Oh, I should do, um, Let's look only at the he at the top 16. I'm not even going to keep an other, and do geom uh, species and size equals total production. And I do need a mutate species is FCP reorder species by peak year. Kind of want to order that, and now we have more of a timeline of what used to be. Uh, what you what used to be uh, fit, uh, produced and what is today, uh, or not or not today, but more recently. So here we have Lake Whitefish, uh, and so I'm going to do the top twenty. Heck, I'll do the top twenty-five. Why not? Yeah. So th this kind of helps communicate. Okay, channel catfish and bullhead. Uh, when the, but there's still channel catfish and bullhead separately. Maybe the and it used to be common to include ands in the 1800s, that makes some sense, and then maybe later they decide to crack down on that kind of keep them separate. Okay, so make that um, is possible. I'm gonna make this one be a little bit prettier. I'm gonna say year of peak production. Why, I don't need a, uh, and uh, size is total production, or I'll call it all time production. And I'm gonna do one other thing, which is scale size continuous labels equals comma format. That'll make that um, these look a little bit better. Yeah, this is um, this is kind of an interesting timeline. Uh, that's one way to view. It. Notice, unlike a bar, a graph, I can uh, facet graph, I can see this a little bit more clearly. Okay, so that's the um, that's uh, the first way. That, that's the first way we can we can approach this. The second is the um, uh, is by uh, by lake. So I'm going to be interested for a second in looking at, here we go, we have, I'm not going to look by species yet, I'm going to look by lake, but otherwise I'm going to try just keeping the exact same code. I do. I no longer need the lump. Okay, mostly like Michigan, Erie, Huron, Superior. Like it's not as um. This is not as exciting as certainly a result. Uh, I am a little curious though. What about the combination of fish and uh, lakes? Are some fish uh, specific to particular lakes? So for that question, I'm gonna let me see. I'm gonna bring back in this mutate. I only want 16 species. I can still keep all the lakes. And I'm going to do group by lake and species. And this is really useful for heat map, uh, which is going to be called the geom tile in the um, in, uh, in, in ggplot2. And I'm going to say fill equals uh, total production. Scale fill. I like gradient 2. Uh, I like the blue as like depth because I can say like the um, let's see I can uh, I can say low is white, high is blue, dark blue. I don't know like a kind of a fish blue. That doesn't uh, is that dark blue? Yeah, I think it's a dark blue. Let's uh, get rid of these grid lines I think, and the um, couple ways I can go about that. But I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna do the simplest way which is theme, uh, theme panel grid major x equals element blank. 
Oh, panel. I can just do panel grid equals element blank. I think. Yeah, uh, it's up. This this kind of shows like all right. Erie has a lot of types of fish. I'm actually going to say, and look at the top thirty. Heck, I'm going to look at. I'm going to even. Uh, what if I just look at all of them? Eh, not terribly exciting. So let's do the top twenty. And um, I'm also going to say mm, I want to do expand limits fill equals zero. Does that work? I think this works. I want to keep a zero on on the um, on the graph. And uh, yeah, this isn't um, terrible except that I'm not reordering my lakes. Oh, uh, I meant to do descending true. You know, I don't need descending true on these two. I'm gonna basically uh, transpose this. Look like nope. I want this. I wanted it the. I wanted this one descending true. I want the lakes. I'm using on the wrong one. Uh, I want. Here we go. I kind of like this uh, top left being the. Strongest. All right, so like alewife is, all right, so what am I learning from this? Alewife is found only in Michigan, and uh, nothing is found in St. Clair, so much so that I'm going to say filter lake is not equal to St. Clair. I don't like it being in this, uh, in this graph, kind of not adding anything. Uh, and yeah, so now I can say uh, lake species. All time production. Kind of clean this up a little bit. Uh, yeah, so the this is like, okay, where is production happening? And the answer is a, a lot in Michigan, less so other places. I could do some normalization. I could do some clustering. I'm not going to... Um, oh, well, yeah, did, did, did I just suggest, what if I normalize by total value uh, to look at like the distribution instead of looking at the totals? Yeah, I think both of these are interesting um, approaches. Let's try... Uh, so I'm going to actually call this by lake species. That way I don't have to repeat quite as much code. So this is the original, and now it's normalized. So we do group by lake, summarize, PCP is, uh, oh, I didn't summarize, I meant to do a mutate, uh, total production divided by sum of total production. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Now each of these adds up to a to, to the same total. Change this to percent format, uh, and we can say like, okay, the um, in fact percent format accuracy is one. I don't like the point zero. Yeah, look at that. Uh, okay, now each of these are total. What's interesting here? Lake Superior almost entirely Cisco. Little Lake Whitefish, some Cisco trout, Lake Trout, uh, and yeah, that is true. These are kind of um. Look at this as percentage. Yeah, this might be more interesting. It's like. Michigan is these types of fish, and Erie is these types of fish. You really can tell which type of fish they are based on the, um, uh, you, you, you really tell which type of fish they are, um, or what lake it is based on like a, like a type of catch. And that's certainly not, not, uh, not strange at all uh, that they'd be different across these, um, these lakes. Okay, that's it for species and lakes. We can do a lot of other things. We look in one lake over time, stuff like that. I, I'm not going to. I think this is um, plenty. I'm interested in seeing. Um, uh, I'm really interested in seeing the other data set. So I, we, we we might still do forecasting. I didn't really want to check what was the other uh, forecast. It was stocked. Oh man, what is this about? For stocked, let me see. No, the um. Oh my goodness, it's a map. We got a longitude and a latitude. We can do an animation. We can do year, month, day, lake, site, site name. What are the, okay, oh wow, man. Uh, if I look at it like, uh, I'll keep this open in this, in this viewer. We've got so many things we can, we can look at. Let's look at, I'm gonna do janitor, clean names, turn these into snake case. Oh man, these are uh, the world's most consistent names. 
necessarily the um but yeah it looks like this is a much a much more uh detailed examination if i try species sort equals true okay oh man these are like species codes uh do i see anything that might uh help with this no i'm not uh oh there's also a site code it looks like Sure. And, um, case, oh man, there are lots of things we could look at. There's a species and a strain. And, um, yeah, I'm going to do, what is age in months? I wonder, I don't think that's the, is that, I don't think it's the age of the fish. These aren't like, wait, no, no, this is a site that is, and now, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's a lot that I'm still kind of learning about this. Uh, and SID is the, yeah, so the um so one is I just want to know what period of time are we looking at here? And do we have data from every year? We do. Uh, every year in the, or rather every just about every year since like 60 or maybe 1980. I don't want to look since 1990. It looks like the amount of data we've been getting, not necessarily the amount of fish, but the amount of data is, is a little uh, cleaner there. Next question is if I look at is can I make a map? If I do not, is in a longitude? Nope. No map. Uh, there's two points that have a longitude and nothing else that, that, that doesn't. What is a grid? Uh, not is in a, so I can't do a, I'm not going to, probably not going to do a map. Most data does have a grid. Uh, I wonder on the grid, does it tell me like, it's in the viewer, grid is a, uh, Army Corps of Engineers grid. Okay, so I'm curious what that is. If I did, Army Corps Engineers grid number. Oh, grid management system, okay. Grid, I wonder if there's like some kind of grid ID with the GeoNames ID. See, this is like such a long, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Like if I did grid 1531, how would I, where would I go to see that? Grid number 1531, like how would I find out this is in a particular, no, this is not, the same thing. Like, uh, is there some kind of grid ID somewhere? I'm not, I'm wondering just like, like this is my last chance to make it a map is if I had something that could translate this grid number back to a, um, back to like a longitude and latitude. Not seeing it. That's all right. The, um, uh, if somebody sees what I can do with, uh, is able to figure out what, what's going on with grids, uh, go for it. I might not do much with, with this data. Oh wait, what is a statistical district? Uh, Uh huh. Okay. Uh, stat district. What is a statistical district? I should have started. Should have started with that. No, I'm not see. I'm sure I can. I I don't know that much about like this kind of geo stuff, so I don't know what I would do here. Uh, oh man, this is quite a um. This one would be be quite an adventure, I think. But I am uh, I am going to take a quick look at the stock count, count stage. Nope, don't know what that means. I don't think I have like the the data I would need to work with this stocked. Uh, what if I just did what is the distribution of length? In millimeters. Oh, that, that's kind of neat. Uh, most fish are at this, where would that be, like uh, a couple hundred, maybe like um, 200 or something like that, or 150 uh, millimeters long. And um, uh, that, that's not a, uh, that's like a little graph we could do with this. We could say something like group by species, but then I'm still going to have those weird species codes. So uh, median length is median of length. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do anything with, with this. Just like, uh, uh, I don't even know what these species are. Okay, I'm not going to use stock because I have 20 minutes left and I'm more interested in like getting into like changes over time. And this is a lot going on. I probably need to spend a solid amount of time really understanding like, uh, this is got, um, really understanding the data, maybe linking some of these, uh, these location data to other data sources. Uh, I'm not going to jump into that uh, 
today for sure. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take a quick look, uh, quick look at it. Okay, let's talk forecasting. Let's pick one kind of fish. Uh, let's look at fishing, what do we say? Carp was pretty common. Let me go back to whatever the graph that I made there to look at. Um, So carp was really common, and what was it? And cisco was really common. Cisco is really low now. I usually I'm gonna start with something like yellow perch that at least is still has some production, just as to start with an example. And imagine that I said filter for a species is yellow perch. I don't know what a yellow perch looks like. I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of fish. Uh, and we did group by year and uh, year and species. Oh, and summarize fishing. And uh, we said, okay, this is his production per year. And um, the, let's see, yeah, then I did year and total production. All right, so I'm not going to work by decade anymore. I'm going to work by year. And we could start saying something like, how would we forecast this forward? All right, what we're gonna do is say, let's forecast this and then we'll start looking at other ones or possibly forecasting by things like um, like lake. Uh, this brings in uh, the our sweep. The, is it sweep or, yep, there it is. The sweep package by the really great folks at uh, Business Science that is, uh, and this, I have done this in a, in a Tidy Tuesday before. I cannot remember which. Uh, I do remember that it, that it is quite fun. And, um, Yep, I'm just remembering now how to do S S W tidy sweep tidies these. Uh, how would I do? I remember how to do a forecast. Just uh, remembering, remembering, remembering. S W tidy forecast. There's a whole. There's a vignette on this. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Forecasting. Yes, so the story is we create, I remember this now, we need to create a tidy table uh, of time TK. All right, so first do I have time TK? Good on me. And um, if I look at by year species, There's a oh um and uh, ungroup, or or I can do, oh what if in what if in summarize fishing I said no nah, I'm not gonna do this, uh, I'm just gonna say ungroup. Uh, and there's something called TKTS. So oh um but it needs to have a date column. All right, so that's the other thing I'm gonna do here is in by year species. I'm gonna take year and turn it into a January 1st date. So I can do that with mutate year is, there's a few ways to do this, but the low tech way might be the best, which is just paste the year with 0101 and turn it into a date. And look at that. Uh, so the, um, why are oh, uh, negatives are these indices? I don't know what that, what an index here is. But all right, so we can say, okay, here's the total production per year. By year species. Should ignore the N obs. I think it's not interesting anymore, but uh, it's fine. Uh, all right, so the, um, yeah, so uh, this creates a, uh, so for a modeling a time series then. Cool. So what I first do once I've created this now has it as a time series. It's the really key thing. It like it keeps track of when the particular time points are. And the um, great. What I do is use the ETS package for oh yes. Yeah, so this is a method of forecasting called an exponential smoothing or um, ETS, which is error, trend, and seasonal. There's not going to be any seasonal effect here. I'm still gonna uh, maybe I should use it in a simpler model. But let's use, uh, all right, so I do library forecast, library time TK, library forecast. I remember myself now, we have our time TK, and now I do, let's call it ET. 
Oh, um, it needs the univariate. All right, then what I'll do is I'll do select minus n obs. Uh huh. Okay. Then the um. Uh, so sorry. If I do ETS, then I get this like exponential trend and um, uh, time and and it's like, all right, well, what do I do with that? Uh, this is now I fit a model just like that. I've said get rid of n obs so that now by year species species is just this. Turn it into a time object and predict uh, total production over time. And the um. Uh, and the story is okay. Well, well, we can do three things I think with this model. One is we can tidy it, SW tidy, and I need to do library sweep for that. Is it sweet? Have these, has this package possibly changed recently? Like sweep. Oh, okay, sorry. It, the, um, the loading didn't work. I'm gonna rerun this and the cleaning steps. All right, we fit an ETS mod, SW tidy. There it is, okay, the only terms we have in this model are an alpha and an L. I don't know what those mean, I think one of them's about like the smoothing, uh, you know, it's gonna be generally like, I think one of them might be a trend and one of them might be the bandwidth of the smoother. We're gonna see what we, um, what, what do we come up with next. But uh, the really interesting one I think is gonna be SW augment. Uh, yeah, so it, looks like, yeah, it looks like they got something that they wanna fix. Um, and what's cool about SW augment is it actually shows what the value, what the value actually is, and what the fitted model would have said that it was. So the um, here we go. One second, looking at the um, the actual the residual fitted and the residual, and that lets us like actually look at the um, the trend. Is there a short function for this? Hmm. No, nope, that's okay because I can actually run this. The uh, here we go. Um, Yep. All right. I can take a look at our augment, and I can do. Why am I doing it on index? How does it? Yeah, it bothers me that the index is one, two, three, four, and not a um, and not a year and month. How did that work in this situation? But didn't work. Okay. The um. I might need to say, to tell it how to treat the time series. Okay, I do need to tell it how to treat the time series. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, once a year, starting in, well, min, here's a little trick, uh, min dot dollar sign years, whatever gets piped in. Ah, I really thought that was gonna gonna be useful. Start in I really thought it was gonna be start in two thousand seven. I think maybe it doesn't like things that are only once a year. Uh, I'm sure this is lots of fun to watch. Time of the uh, the time of the first observation. A vector of two numbers. It does look like it's started a particular year. If I told it twice a year, which is not which is not actually twice a year, it, it's it's within it's uh, at each of these time points. What would it what would it then do if I said augment it? No, it doesn't. Um, See that's what's uh, confusing me is that the why is the index oh start 
What if instead of this I did, um, what if I gave it a specific year? Oh, uh, okay, that, uh, well that, ex I thought it was since 1962, but I guess it's not. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I need to grab the year of it. So I'll do min year of dot year, and year comes from Lubridate. This is a little bit hairy. What I did is I, I wanted to start it in 19, in, uh, uh, there it is. Okay. And freak one. Okay, so, okay, so it's a little better now. Oof. Uh, but now what I can do is I can actually say, all right, plot it by index, ac uh, actual, geom line. Yeah, like I said, I'm a little out of practice on this one. And geom line y equals dot fitted. Look at that. Look at how delayed it is. I really wonder, like, no, I guess that's kind of like how this works, I suppose, that it's always a little bit behind on the prediction. It is, this, in my understanding, is not, a, is not like, it's not fitting the entire curve. It's saying at every month, what would we predict this value to be? So, for instance, it dropped a lot in this last time point, and it didn't predict that. It, 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 like, it was off by a little bit. Um, so it's it's typical on some smoothie trend like this for it to lag. Yeah, but this is one of our, um, yeah, this is definitely a good example is would be like uh, x is year, y is num total production of yellow perch. Yeah, so the really, the key is again, what we did is we, um, I'm going to split this out a little bit just to be really clear what's doing what. I'm going to say yellow perch. Uh, There it is. And uh, this turns into a time series and then fits an exponential trend uh, with, um, with seasonality, which is not used here, onto this. And then, uh, which has, it fits these two parameters and it uses them. This is showing what it would think in the future. All right, what's great about this is now I know that I can forecast the future. I just need to, remind, to look up the code and remind myself how. Oh, hey, this is really neat. There's, a, um, there's also a function for de decomposing it. Actually, I'm going to look at that first because it is going to help us understand how forecasting works. So the, um, let's see, so the, uh, decom this fit, oh, I just called it um, EPS mod. Hmm. You know, I guess because there's no seasonal trend here, observe, I really expected this to have at least two components, but maybe there's level, I'm saying observed level, maybe there's no slope component? Huh. I'm looking at like at the ET, at, at how ETS was called here. I don't know. All right, I'm not going to be able to use um, use this, but yeah. What I'm going to do now is say, let's forecast in a future um, horizon. So I can say forecast is uh, take our model and forecast. This is a horizon of, let's say, 10 years in the future. I want to know what's going to be in, in the future. Now we actually, ah, now we have our 10 data points. This data stops in 2000. Uh, so we'd want to say, okay, let's try forecasting beyond this what are the next uh, 10 steps. And the key here, yep, is we do SW sweep of this. So this is a forecast object. It says, here's by each year what I predict, which is, oh wow, it looks very flat. Yeah, it looks like there might not be a trend term here. It might actually, oof, we would, we would predict completely flat. That's good to know. That's not a very, that's not an exciting result. That's like it just predicts that it stays exactly the same. I'm just looking at this and, um, and that's a little bit, uh, well, that's certainly a disappointment. The, um, uh, if I look up the ETS function, you know, what if I didn't use ETS? What other models do I have uh, that I can use in forecast? Let's find out. What are some good models?
it was naive, but this is we're looking pretty naive already. And um, I don't know, I don't know any of these. Let's see what we got. The uh, what is Croston? Intermittent demand. It's probably not with not going to make much sense here. This STL is seasonal trend with Lois. We know there's not seasonality. It's not going to be. That's not going to be as relevant. SCS is an exponential smoothing forecast. Okay, I like that possibility. Let's, uh, and it looks like there's three possibilities, SCS, Holt, and HW. So let's try a couple of these. I'm going to stop calling it EPS mod. I'm just going to call it mod. Oh, um, mod. That's odd. I would have expected this part to work. Nope, it does. Oh, it's a for. Oh shoot, I'm doing a fork. I'm doing forecasting. On wait, SES does forecast. I would have expected forecast and other information. All right, what is the the category of object I'm trying to create here, and what are the other examples? All right, so oh, so these are functions that output a forecast object as opposed to like. Seasonal naive. I'm just looking for a second at Adam. Um, all right. So the um. Hi. Hey, this is cool. Auto layer. I haven't heard of this. That might make this a little bit uh, easier. The uh, trend, I'm, I'm looking, okay, there's like linear trend, there's other kinds of trends. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand for a second how, um, all right, I'm not going to sweep for a minute. I'm going to try this auto plot situation. All right, so the story is going to say, let's use Holt, and we're just going to do a forecast. Actually, oh yeah, it looks like I don't actually need... I'm still, yeah, I'm still definitely learning to, to use this. Here's an EPS mod. But um, what if I did a forecast with, I don't know, what do we pick? Holt? Sure. So if I did Holt, this is auto plot that I actually hadn't seen before. If I say time series, hey, look at that. Uh, it just creates the plot. And now I can say auto layer? Oh, ho. F cast Holt. Aha, that's kind of what I was going for. All right, so what this would do is how we set up um, forca uh, some forecasting models is we can say like the, um, actually I'd never seen this method before. This auto, we created TKTS, which was not trivial. It took a little messing and then we did this like, uh, then we applied this, um, this particular method. We said, okay, here's, um, uh, we'll use Holt to fit this. Now, uh, Holt is one, what is another one? I don't know, the, um, oh, I saw SES, yes, yeah, so we said fcast SES, I'm sure you do Holt. I'm using all the default arguments, which for people that probably know about this stuff is, 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 is uh, probably, it makes, it looks pretty embarrassing. But I'm gonna actually try doing a second layer and saying, can I, what does auto layer take? Can I do a color or something? Oh, it'll it'll actually do this for me, huh? Uh, nope, it does not. Oh, you know why it doesn't? Because I needed a no. Actually, I do not know why it did not do it. It, it, it seemed to add this column here. I kind of was, was excited about, about that possibility. Oh, it's the series argument. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is, this is, this is nifty. Uh, Holtz method. Here we go, now we can see Holt and SES. If I add in PI, I'm guessing means prediction interval. And if I just say I don't want a prediction interval, it's gonna be a little easier to read. 
All right, Holter SES, not very exciting. Yellow Perch is not an exciting one to look at. Let's look at Carp. So I'm going to copy this together because I'm actually noticing like, let's look at a second fish. Yeah, it definitely took me a little practice. We're not seeing things like here's how it fits so far, but we're, we're fitting a model and then we're doing forecasting from there. And here we go. Uh, oh, I can do a select negative. Yeah, so I can do, uh, I can take this and I say time series, and then I apply this again. Let's look at carp. Ah, pretty flat recently. Not so exciting. Uh, and is there an HW version, uh, method? Nope, it doesn't like HW because there's seasonality in HW. I think that sounds right. Uh, Taking a quick look. Okay, there is. I'm looking for the ones here that don't have a seasonal component. So it's like the ones that end with an N, which is simple exponential, so the SES, Holt, and additive damp trend. Where is additive damp trend? Where, like, what, what's the code for doing that? Uh, I wonder if that's... Oh, I actually saw it, I think, in an example, didn't I? Sure, let's do this. No, 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 HW is too seasonal, is, is, is the seasonal one. Additive damp trend. Yeah, again, it's not it's not as exciting when there's not seasonality. Seasonality adds a lot of fun to forecasts. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna um, mostly I can I can uh, skip this. But the um, really really uh, where was that example that I just saw with Holt? Where it said it added some some uh, damping dampening. No, I probably just missed it. Um, Is there a damp equals true or anything? Yep, okay, I'm gonna try that out. Sure, I'm gonna say Holt damped, why not? I don't even know, I think damp has something to do with, um, actually, yeah, I'm not gonna explain it. Uh, I just wanna show how we would compare a couple of these. Man, these three are not exciting. What other ones do we have, Cisco? Yeah, so these are not some exciting trends. Heck, even if I say, let's, H, let's forecast H equals 100 or 50. <laughs> not a huge, uh, not huge variation. Not sure where the damp one end up, ended up, but um, under those, but... Yeah, the, in any case, this is not a perfect example. Like we said, we're we're, we're looking we're not looking at a seasonal time series here. But the um, uh, the last thing I could do here that is kind of interesting is what if I wanted to do this on multiple species, like I'm doing right now, and I wanted to facet them. Uh, that's that's what I'm going to need to do is take this and um, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mutate species is FCP lump species. Uh, in the top, let's say eight, and then ver versus other. Yeah, let's do nine. Nine again. Uh, group by species year. I need to re-aggregate them. And do the um. And then I want to say, let's see. Yes, I want to say. All right, so now I've got the data across each of these nine species. Real key here is what I have to do is, actually there's a few ways to do this, but I'm going to use nest, where I'll say nest everything except for species. Now I've got nine of these rows. Oh, it's data equals species now. Uh, and the, um, so now I've nested the, uh, the two columns of year in total production. What I'm going to do is do mutate 
time series is map, use pers map data pkps. Uh, actually, I'll do, I'll basically just apply this exact thing to each of them. This doesn't work. Uh, no, it does work. It's going to be the minimum year. And hee hee hee. Warning messages. Uh, <laughs> this is such a hack. I'm going all over the place. Uh, oh, no, but it needs to keep. How does it need to include date? And yet it's still. And then it complains about date. Isn't that annoying that it's that it compl I don't know. I, I, I think I'm missing something here. But the um, it, it drops the the year even though I j it, it insists on it, on it having a year. I don't know why it's doing that. All right, but the um, yeah, uh, it, it's it's complaining, but it's actually still working. It's creating these time series, and now I can actually do mutate forecast. Oh um, we actually have three types of time series. Yeah, I can. I'll I'll do them all here. Map time series halt. So I'm applying the, all of these functions, and there are other ways that I can uh, create this, but this is not bad. The time series halt h equals 50, damped equals true, and SES equals map time series SES h equals 50. It's not the, um, the absolute worst. Uh, What error did I have here? Input must have length. Uh, one not fifty, not ten. Where did I have an input? Which of these ones failed? Only the damped one. Sure, I'll just skip it. So now what I did is, but after I have this, I have my um, time series, my hold forecast, and my SES forecast. And this is exactly where the tidying is really helpful, where if I just took one of these time series, uh, what would happen if I SW tidy this? Yay. Okay, so the, um, uh, the stories I actually do want to aggregate all, across all of these, and then aggregate across each of their four, of their, um, types of forecasts. Wait, really? Man, I really thought there was a, a way to tidy forecast objects. I thought that was the whole idea. Didn't I use one? I used one like a, oh, it's called sweep. And how did I use sweep earlier? Nope, this is different sweep. Sorry. SW sweep, it's called. Yep. Ha 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 ha. Uh, right, that was what that was what happened. Is there's a built-in sweep function, and I meant to do SW sweep. Yeah, so this would say like, okay, here's the um, here's each of our forecasts, and nope, doesn't doesn't do that. Man, I'm going all. I just I really want to like, I want to get all of these graphs. Yeah, I can auto plot one of them. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Um, the so the shame of what's going on here is that um. I was uh, I was interested in showing all nine of these. We can do it. I actually am running a little late for something, uh, so I might not uh, have time to. Yeah, I won't, um, I won't have time to uh, today. But the um, the stories that I could we could do time series tidy is map time series SW tidy unnest time series tidy, and then we actually have that's when we have our series data. But that's not the interesting one. The actually interesting one is going to be forecast sweep is map forecast sweep.
SW sweep. And it's four casts. Nope, it doesn't care for this thing that I am doing. Oh well. I, uh. Yeah, I, I, um. Oh, wait, wait. Oh no, it's got. They've each got their own name, right? Like, hold. Um. Whew, okay, sorry about that. Uh, all right. Now I'm actually finally uh, um, where I wanted to be. The story is by, by working with these sweeps, I can now say something like, okay, let's add index total production geome line facet wrap by species. Here we go. I really did want to see this. All right. And now, uh, and what do I have? Like a yeah, let's do so now I work I've I've recombined my forecast objects. And now I say geom ribbon y min is low dot I don't know, let's do it eighty percent. High dot eighty uh, y max is high dot eighty and alpha point two. And when I do a sweep, I can choose the horizon. Can I choose the horizon? No, I choose the horizon back here. Here we go. Okay, this is the graph that I was taking my my time to uh to set up. And um, yeah, so one thing I can see here is that we probably should have done a li the right now they can go above or below zero, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. I wonder if Holt can do on a log scale. Exponential is true. I bet that nope, inappropriate model for data with oh yeah, so I'll just need to do a quick um, mutate total production is total production plus one uh, to add one before doing exponentiation. No model able to be fitted. Oh well, skip the exponential. But the um, uh, but yeah, this this would be um, this is the the idea where why do I like these um, yeah, why do I like uh sweep? It's been a while since I use this, but the idea is that I actually do like to work with multiple model objects, and we could have done this once for each lake, we could have done one for each each fish, etc. It looks like in general there's not an exciting trend here, and again, there, there's the seasonality and that takes away part of the value, but I did want to take a, to do a little reminder of forecasting. All right, let's finish up. Uh, what do we do today? I um, I wanted to look by species, so I set up a quick summarize fishing uh, function. We used a lot, and the um, uh, and we looked at things like, okay, here's the overall production per decade, and here it is per fish. Once I did it per fish, I realized I wanted to do something like, um, here's the um, uh, year of peak production, as well as using size to represent how big the fish was overall. We, um, I knew I wanted to do uh, production across the Great Lakes, and once I wanted to look by Great Lake, I really did want to take a look at um, at things like the. Uh, I really like this heat map where we said, okay, there's um, uh, Michigan most says these fish, Erie's most says these fish. There are a few types like late white fish that are, that appear everywhere. Um, that found everywhere and others that are, are very specific. So that was that I, I kind of like that heat map. I took a look into stacked and then I realized just that there was so much going on in this um, with me to deal with the data here that I wasn't able to make a map or anything else. So I, I moved on to forecasting. In the end, forecasting would have liked to have maybe have maybe I'll do it in the future when we have more seasonal data. Uh, but the um, but it was it was useful at least to get a little back into the zone of oh yes here's what we use sweep for here's we use time TKTS for things like that though I, I definitely um, I recommend there was another screencast I had if you really just use it sweep you can find it in the uh, the annotations which are really helpful uh, help the data annotations in the GitHub repo okay um, uh, that that's it for today uh, thanks so much for joining uh, if you enjoyed it please do be uh, be sure to like and subscribe I hope you had fun I certainly did I'll see you next week